a day, mate. Nope, your eyes aren't deceiving you. Well, I'd rather be in the Australian outback. I'm in my backyard attempting an Australian backpack simulation. Well, more of a side yard. Well, I'm imagining being with the Aboriginal tribe learning the outdoor baking method of today's bake, a traditional bush bread. You heard me right, bush bread. The weather is beautiful. The sun is out, it's warm. I don't wanna spend the day indoors baking when I can bake outside. So whether you're on a picnic, a camping trip with your loved ones, or a multi-day backpacking trip alone or with friends, you can bake homemade bread. All you really need are a few simple ingredients. This is all we have, guys. This is it. I'll explain what they are in a minute. And then you need either a heat source, a campfire, or what I'm using today. I have a butane propane mix canister, and then I have a small cooking stove. See, that fits nicely in a backpack. And my one serving pot canisters here for cooking. Uh, and, and some foil, that's all you need. The most common bread in Australia, as the Australians call it, is the bush tucker, which means from nature. Also known as damper bread, meaning something that suppresses the appetite. So for more information on this bread, see my previous video linked below with a traditional oven baked version and more cultural information. So bush bread also goes by other names. It goes by Australian cowboy or backpacker bread, and it is a yeast-free bread. Very simple, just a couple ingredients, and there's no baking soda in it like an Irish soda bread. It is just baking powder in place of baking soda and traditionally baked outdoors over hot coals in my case, a canister, and that's how they would traditionally make it in the Aboriginal tribe. So for you Southern Americans, this is the Australian version of a biscuit. So baking in the outdoors requires a little prep work. You should measure out and combine your dry ingredients ahead of time before you go outside, and then all you have to do is just mix them with whatever liquid that you need, and you can bake. It's that simple. So since I'm baking for one today, I'm having my recipe posted in the link below this video. But if you're baking them for multiple people, you'll wanna make the whole recipe. So here's our bag of ingredients. This is it. So I went ahead and wrote on the bag what I put in here so that I could remember what I have. If I have a bag full of other things, I at least know where my bread is. So these ingredients are, I've got one cup of all-purpose flour, I have a quarter teaspoon of salt, and then a half of a teaspoon of baking powder, and then all I have to do is add a quarter cup of water here. Baking powder was not an actual ingredient in the original Aboriginal bush bread, but over time, people have added the baking powder because it adds, is, adds a little bit of flavor and it's a rising agent, so it makes it just a little bit puffy and not too dense. So, you know what, when, you're ha when you have a bag, that's all you need if you can put everything in it. You can add a few extra ingredients. It's okay because it's all self-contained. You can add so many other flavorings to this. Like you can add, if you want more flavor, you can add sugar, you can add shortening of butter. Think about some dried herbs. You can add dried fruit or some choky. Oh, defo. <laughs> this is just a blank canvas recipe. So have fun, get your kiddos in on the preparation using their favorite add-ins. In fact, you can have a separate bag for each kid, a separate flour mix for each kid and have them put their favorite add-ins ahead of time so that when you get to your campsite or if you're backpacking and you get to where you want a snack or to eat, you have everything that ready to go for them individually in their own bags. You can even have the half of this recipe if you just want maybe one or two rolls because this is gonna make three biscuits today. So then all you or the kids have to do is when you're ready, you just add some water, you knead the bag, shape your rolls, and then you bake them. How easy is that? Now that's ace. All right, since I'm backpacking light here, I have everything I need in this quart size bag. So I've already mixed it up. So I have my salt, my baking powder, and my flour all mixed in. Of course, it's been traveling with me in my backpack all day, right? So it's been moving around in the pack. Then all we have to do is add about a quarter cup of water. This is my Nalgene bottle that I've been drinking out of, or would be drinking out of. So a qu about a quarter of a cup of water is gonna be about 60 milliliters. And if you're looking at the Nalgene bottle, you have division markers that are 100 milliliters apart. So just think, aim for about halfway between two 100 millimeter marks, and that'll be enough. But honestly, you really don't need a measure because you're just going to pour enough in, knead it, and then add more water as you need it. 
Okay, and we can do everything in this bag. I'm gonna need in this bag, I don't need a bowl or a spoon or anything, but if you have a lot more ingredients, if you have, if you've doubled this recipe or um, you are making for a lot of people, then you may want a bowl and a spoon. But look at me, I can just do it all in this bag. I don't even have to use my hands for this. So you're just gonna massage the bag until the water and the ingredients have really blended and mixed well. It's gonna look like a typical bread that you would make. I'll let out some of the air, make it a little easier to massage here. And I can see some flowers roaming around. Can you see that? Still have some flowers, so I'll probably need to add a little bit more water. And I did measure it. I know it's gonna be about a quarter of a cup. I didn't measure it when I poured it in. And I have a secondary bag over here, and this is my dusting bag with a little extra flour. So if it turns out I accidentally added too much water, I can always add a little bit more flour, just like you would do in your own kitchen when you're making homemade bread. So I'm gonna add a little bit more water. I'm about a quarter of a cup anyway, so I should be there. Okay, I'm ready to use my hands because I really don't want to see what the stove feels like. So I brought my handy dandy sanitizer because that's what I would have in the back country or camping. So I'll clean my hands a bit. I don't think Scott wants to eat hand sanitizer tasting bread today. So let's look and see what we have in here. So this is dough, I'm gonna let you see inside of this bag. So the stove looks pretty good. It's been, it's a little bit damp, but it's not too much. I think it's actually, I'm not so sure I wanna to touch it, to be honest with you. I think I need to help it a little bit. All right, I'm gonna let you see what the stove looks like. Okay, so I've massaged it in. I've got a messy hand, but it's okay. It's what you're gonna have when you're baking homemade bread. All right, I think that's pretty good. So we're gonna divide this into three rolls. So I'm gonna use the bag to kind of get this in a nice shape. It's easy, so it'd be easy to divide into thirds. So more of like a roll. All right, so I've got a nice little roll going inside of my bag. So I'm just gonna divide it into thirds. I'm just gonna do this as a rough estimate. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna tear off a nice, nice size ball. Okay, so that would be one. And then two, we'll try to make them equal if you can. All right, I think that mine are pretty equal. Okay, so this is the size you can expect for the one cup of flour. Okay, so now we get to bake them. So this is where you have a little bit of flexibility. Um, if you're gonna use a canister, which is what I'm using today because I don't have a campfire, right? Um, which is, if you're, back, if you're backpacking in the backcountry and you're following the leave no trace guidelines, you're not gonna be able to campfire anyway unless there's already a fire pit established for you, you're not gonna create a new one. So, most people who backpack will usually have their own canister. So you're gonna flatten it out. If you're using a canister, this is what you're gonna do first. You're gonna kind of flatten them out like this. So it's like a little biscuit, okay? Now, and since we're gonna be putting them in a pot, we wanna make sure that we dust them with flour. This is the other bag of flour that I have because we don't want this to stick to the pot and because we don't have any greaser. But if you have, you know, butter or shortening or whatever or spray you could certainly use that depending on the, con the container that you're using. Since I'm baking for one my canister is only big enough for one of my biscuits my rolls but if you have a, you know a bigger setup then you of course cook more than one at a time but I'm just going to cook one at a time today. My biscuits are ready so let's get the heat going. I'm outside it's okay making a mess right? All right, so I have my canister set up. Everything is tight and safe so that I don't blow anything up. All right, this part always makes me a little nervous. So I'm gonna turn on a little bit of the gas and then add the spark. Oh, that worked. All right, now, if you have a propane tank like this, you can easily just turn it down so that the heat's not too hot. Okay, now, while that's heating up here, in my bowl, I'm gonna place a piece of foil because if you don't, and like me, you'll leave burned flour stains on the bottom of your bowl. So, and I don't really wanna do that. So I've got this piece here. I'm gonna tear it just a bit so it's not so large. I'm gonna cover the bottom so my flour doesn't stick. All right, so we're gonna add one of our 
bush rolls here. Okay, remember it's all nice and floured. So we just stick it in the pot like that. All right, and then my pot has these little handles on it, which is super great, makes it easy. I'm gonna go ahead and sit it over my stove. And you never know where you're gonna end up backpacking. And sometimes you're in a very windy area. So I have a homemade wind guard here, just a bunch of foil that's folded together. And this will keep the heat contained and it will keep the wind from blowing out my flame. But I wanna be able to get to it, get to the flame, so I need to turn it down some. Okay, so we're almost there. And then all you do is cover it. You can cover it with another piece of foil. But since I already have another half pot, I'm just gonna put the lid on top of it. And we're gonna set the timer for five minutes. All right, I can hear this flame is roaring, so I need to turn this down. So I have my phone going for five minutes. And at five minutes, we're going to flip the bread over. All right, I have also cooked two rolls in this pot before but they were more ball shape because they don't really rise that much. So you could technically put two in here and cook and bake them, but they were so big and round and thick, they took a lot longer to cook and they were just a tad bit doughy on the inside because I had to cook them longer, they were harder on the outside. So I think a better method is to flatten them more like a biscuit and then put them in your pot and let it cook maybe one at a time. Unless again, your pot is bigger. So while this is cooking, let me show you what you can do if you're cooking over a campfire. If your kids have their own bag of bread, and you want to have everyone in the family participate, you get your ball of bread. It doesn't matter if you have all kinds of cool things on the inside, like what we, we talked about earlier, chocolate, herbs, whatever. You just need one ball, right? You need a stick. So it could be um, a skewer. I actually just have a chopstick here. It's that simple. You want to skewer your roll here at, the, at one end and sort of make an oval out of it because we want it to stay on the stick. So it looks like that and notice, I can just let it, I can hold it here like this, I can rotate it and it's not going to fall off, right? So it's like roasting a marshmallow. And that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna roast your bread over an open fire, just like a marshmallow. So get your kids ready, have them hold it over the fire and you would just rotate it around a, you know, a few times and um, for 10 to 15 minutes and it should be done. And you should start noticing brown spots on it like you're gonna see with our pot cooked one here. So you can have your homemade roll and roast it. And if you wanted to, if you've got a long enough stick, if you have two rolls you wanna make, put both on here at the same time and just make sure they're both in above the fire. And you could cook them both together and you've got two rolls ready to eat whenever you're ready. My five minutes are up. All right, so let's take a look. We need to rotate this. All right, I wanna show, we're gonna use my stick to move it around here. So I'm gonna lift it up and look at how you can see how it's puffing up from the baking powder. And it's definitely cooking. So we just need to turn it over. You know what, I'm gonna stab it. Okay, now I'm gonna show you something. Don't do this. Now, when I flipped my bread over, obviously my butane tank was too hot because guess what, that shouldn't have happened and I burned the backside. But just make sure that you keep your heat on a lower level and I thought it was too high but I was like oh I've done this before it'll be fine even when you've done this before you can still mess up so you should hear it's just a soft whisper should be all that you hear from the butane um, fire you should not hear it blazing because that's gonna be too hot so we're gonna do it for five minutes to cook the other side and then we'll take a look I'm gonna take this out and let you take a look at it all right that's the side I just baked for five minutes and it's that's the way it should look like this part side was my mistake because my flame was too high. So make sure that your flame is relatively low or this will happen to you. So to prove to you that we can do this, we're gonna do this one more time. I have my heat source at a right flame level now. So I'm gonna set this one aside. I'm gonna put my second one in. Now, if you're doing this over an open flame, you don't need to dust your bread in flour. This is only so that it doesn't stick to the foil. So I'm gonna go put that one into the pot. I'm gonna cover it as we did with the last one, and we're gonna set the timer for five minutes. And then we're gonna flip it, cook it another five minutes, and it'll be done. So 10 minutes is how long it takes to cook. Now, if you have a bigger pan, and then you have multiple rolls baking at once, then 10 minutes is all you need for all of your rolls. But since I've got a one pot here, I can only do one at a time, so it's gonna take me a little bit longer. But 10 minutes, and you're done, and your bread's ready. Okay, my five minute timer went off for the first side of this next biscuit so let's take a look at it 
And look, it's puffing up. There are cracks in it that there weren't before. So, and let's flip it. Oh, it looks nice and brown on the back side. Actually, I'm just going to stab it and flip it. It makes it a little easier. And you're going to expect to have a little bit of burnt, but not as much as I had on the first one. So a few burnt spots are okay. And then we're going to put it back over the flame, cover it for another five minutes. So t let me tell you something cool about how the Aboriginal tribes used to bake this bread. So what they would do is they would take the dough, right? They would have a campfire. They would actually place the dough as is in the hot ash of the fire and let it bake. So you know what's cool about that is that when the dough was baked, yes, it looked like this when it came out, but this would have been the ash, not burnt. So what they would do is that they would either brush off the ash or they would tear off the ash and then they would eat the clean portions of it, the exterior, the interior, and they were okay with it because the bread itself was its container, so to speak, as it was baking. So it was okay that it got burned because they didn't have to eat it anyway. They had plenty of bread, right? So we can imagine that we're baking like the Aborigines and we cooked it in ash and that's why it's black. I'm going with that. <laughs> okay, the second one's baked. Let's take a look. Okay, that doesn't look bad. You expect that when you're cooking over fire, right? So we're gonna set this one aside. We're gonna add in our third one. Okay, so five minutes on the side. Okay, let's take a look at the third one before we flip it. Ooh, it's nice and puffing up. I like that. Let's turn it over. Hey, and look, we didn't burn the backside. I'm getting the hang of it. It only took three, right? <laughs> I tell you, the flame is tricky, particularly if you're cooking in a pot. Because if you're cooking on an open fire, you can continually see what's being cooked and what's not. And you can rotate your stick as frequently as you need to. So over an open flame might be a little easier than in a pot. There's like a sweet spot for the flame and you just have to play with it until you find it. But like we said, the burnt spots are okay. Five more minutes. Okay, so my last biscuit is ready. I shouldn't call these biscuits because in Australia, biscuit means cookie. How about we'll call this our bush roll. So our roll is ready. I think this is my best one yet. Look how pretty the top is. It's nice and pretty, it's not burned. Well, I don't know what the backside looks like yet. Let's see what that one. Oh, it looks awesome. That's what they should look like. So third time's a charm, we did it. Turn off my flame. All right, just set it aside and let it cool. All right, so regardless of the cooking method you use, whether it was over a fire, an open flame, or in a pot like me, when you tap it in the center and it sounds hollow, then you know it's done. But 10 minutes with the little rolls, perfectly done. You don't have to cook any more than that, as long as your flame is at that sweet spot. Let's give these a try. Scott's gonna join us and taste them in a few minutes. I wanna show you the inside real fast. So I cut one in half for you so you could see. Notice it pulls apart, so it's definitely done. It's a dense bread, but it should be because we don't really have any leavening. There's just a little bit of baking powder in it, so it did puff up, but we don't have any super gluten expansion going on here. So cooking outdoors on a backpacking trip, how cool is that to have hot bread? Nice. So Scott's on my simulated backpacking trip today to taste this simple bread since the gluten in it is a problem for me. Oi, mate. Uh, good day. <laughs> Welcome to Summer's Outback. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you could join me. By the way, interested in some bush tilly? What? It's campfire watching. Oh. <laughs> well, if you will, tickle your little cake hole here and take a bite. <laughs> this is a very basic bread containing flour, salt, baking powder, and water. It can be made anywhere as long as you have a heat source. It's that simple. In celebrating our Aussie friends, this recipe in outdoor baking is traditional to the Aboriginal people. So, having tasted it, what do you think? It tastes like a tastes like a biscuit, a dense biscuit. Very basic flavors, simple ingredients. Um, but yeah, it's. I didn't know that you could so easily get fresh bread. Yeah. At a campfire. Uh, exactly. It's crazy how few ingredients you need. While this is a very simple recipe, you can easily add in sugar and massage in some shortening, butter to add more flavor, or 
just split the bread as is, top it with butter, jam, Nutella, or nut butter. Endless possibilities. So why not even make the kid favorite Australian fairy bread out of this? So if that piques your interest, just see my previous video on Australian damper and fairy bread and you'll learn how to make the fairy bread. Regardless, it's just a simple bake to be used as a vehicle to go with your dehydrated meals if you're camping or whatever else you're eating in the whoop whoop. <laughs> so there you have it. We have a simple traditional bread baked in the outdoors using a traditional recipe baked by Aborigines for many years. Thanks for watching. Before you hit that X, subscribe to my channel, and if you haven't already, share my videos with your family and friends. I thank you much. Until next time, mates. Ta! Cheers. Go make the world.